Y'all notice first thing I did is move that piece of candy right over there because I know how I am. I'm one of those ADHD kids. You know what I'm talking about? That everything grabs my attention, so the first thing I would do is I would look at that candy and I'd, I'd have to get it eventually. If y'all notice, things look different around here, doesn't it? You know, we've got vacation Bible school coming up and, and, and our, our theme is anchored. And what it means is being anchored deep in the faith of God. I want to ask you, are you anchored? Is your anchor holding on your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? And if not, I want you to make sure you get this right. This is going to be something that a lot of you kids are going to understand whenever I start telling you about this. A lot of the, a lot of the kids are going to say, what was the preacher talking about? But every one of you adults are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever I was a, a child, just like these children was up here, my mama, she would take us all and we would go shopping. All right, back in, if we was going to the grocery store or wherever we was going, I don't even re really remember Walmart. I don't know when Walmart came in, but I don't even remember Walmart whenever I was a kid. But I, I remember we would go to the stores, and, and of course, my little brother, he was one of them that never got in trouble, ever. And he was a baby at this time. So he was a baby, and so she had three more. It was six, eight, and ten years old. And, and we knew right from wrong. Don't get me wrong, but that don't mean we did right from wrong. All right? So what it was is back then, you know, she would take us places, and we would have the baby in the, in the stroller, in the, in the basket as we was going. And every one of us kids, we would walk around, and we would see things that we wanted. We would look, and if we seen candy, we'd, we'd run over there, and we'd grab that candy, and we'd hold it up, and Mama would say, put that down. Put that down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Put that down, and oh, if we seen a toy, we'd see a toy, and we would get that toy, and, and, and every one of my sisters, they would try to take that toy, and just as they was looking at it, kind of open it up to where Mama would really have to pay for it. You know what I'm talking about? So Mama would tell us, say, don't, don't mess with that, leave everything alone. So we would get to the point that we would get that old evil eye. Any of y'all ever had that evil eye whenever you were somewhere in prayer? Yeah, we'd, we'd get that old evil eye, and every once in a while we'd get a, a smack on our hand, and, and Mom would say, you know, put that thing down. You know, we would keep on, keep on, and keep on doing that because we would know that we was in a public place, and we would know Mama couldn't kill us in a public place. I'm knowing everybody would look around and they would see us, but she would look at us and she'd say, oh, whenever I get you home, when I get you home, it's on. You know what I'm saying? And she would remember whenever she got us home, but it was something that we wanted. And we wanted what we wanted with all of our heart. And it was something that, that every one of you that's old enough, matter of fact, everyone in here knows exactly what I'm talking about. Kids, whenever you go with your mama, you're the same way. Mama, can I have this? Mama, can I have that? Can I have this? Daddy, I want that. And whenever we was kids, we did the same thing. But I want y'all to know something. We knew right from wrong. And we still know right from wrong. And in the Bible, the Bible tells us all about right from wrong. And we didn't think about the consequences about when we did wrong. We didn't think about when we got home. We didn't think about how everything was happening. But if y'all turn into your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want to read you this scripture because I want y'all to, I want y'all to see this. And I want y'all to see because we know everything we want and we know how to act. Every one of us knows how to act. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 14, it says, but continue, but continue thou in the things which you have learned and you've been assured of. You know, I, I think about this. Our parents has taught us a lot of things. Our parents has taught us Bible verses. We come to vacation Bible school to learn a bunch of Bible verses. We learn songs. We learn, we learn how to act. We learn how to dress. We learn how we're supposed to. Last night, my wife has, has got us on a Leave it to Beaver kick. And just so you know, we watched it once last night. Everybody else left, and y'all know what the preacher did. I kept watching Leave it to Beaver. You know why? Because Leave it to Beaver, they, they were, there's things in there that whenever you watch it, you can tell that that's, that's good and it's wholesome and it's something that you watch and you're thinking, you know, that's good. So what we're doing is we're letting our kids watch that. How many of y'all have watched it before? 
Oh, yeah, all of us have. Well, the old beaver last night, listen to this. Beaver last night, whenever I watched it, and it's probably been since I was a kid that I seen it, but Beaver decided that he was going to go to a program to be like church, and Beaver wasn't going to dress right. Beaver wanted to wear his old clothes, and all of his buddies told him, he said, we're not going to wear our good clothes either. And so whenever Beaver got there, Beaver was the only person that didn't have on a suit and tie. I see y'all shaking your heads. Y'all watched it too, didn't you? So, and so Beaver was so ashamed of himself because he didn't wear his best. He didn't give his best. And so whenever he said, Daddy, he said, I'm sticking my stomach. I want to leave. And Daddy walked him right out there to his car, raised up the trunk of the car, and pulled out Beaver's good clothes. And not only did he put him, take his good clothes and put it on him, Daddy said, let's go back in. See, I want you all to know something about what you're doing here. See, God's trying to clothe us in his righteousness. God's trying to get us to the point that, that no matter where we go, we look our best, even if we're walking around. If y'all see me outside of here, you may see me with a cap on. You may see me with camouflage on. You may see me with boots on. You, whenever you see me, I don't look like I look here because I don't wear this right here whenever I'm out. But people knows who I am because the Bible tells me to be clothed in righteousness no matter what I have on. Does that make sense? So everywhere we go, we're still the children of the king. We've still been learned. We've still been taught. And listen to what the Bible says. It says, continue in the things which you have learned and you've been taught and you've, uh, you know about of whom you've been taught and that the things that you've learned. I went just the other day, and I went to church band. The, the battery was bad on the church band, so I went down to Hopper's battery. And whenever I got there, I, I saw Mr. Mike Hopper, and I, I told him, I said, Mr. Mike, how you doing? He said, I'm doing fine. And I told him, I said, Mr. Mike, I want to tell you something. I said, did you know that, uh, that I still remember a lot of things that you taught me whenever you was teaching me in, in school? I said, you used to be my Sunday school teacher, and, and I'd go into Sunday school uh, class, and, and Mike was so well-versed, and he was so studied up. And whenever he got there, he would, he would have everything wrote down of what he was going to say, and he would teach that class so good. And I was like, man, I learned so much, and I, and I still remember that. And I want y'all to know what happened. Tears came to his eyes. And whenever those tears came to his eyes, I looked at him, and I said, I said, uh, Mike, I said, you're not teaching anymore in church, are you? He kind of dropped his head, and he said, no, I'm not. And I said, how come? He said, well, uh, you follow me? There's people that sin here that God has given you gifts. God's given you talents. God's given you opportunities to do things for him. And you used to do them in a strong and a mighty way. And then all of a sudden you fade back and you, you get to the point you say, you know something, I'm not really, I don't really want to do that anymore. And you know what ends up happening? You kind of drop your head a little bit. Why? Because you remember what it was like, that excitement of studying day in and day out to present the Word of God. I wrote that down because that, listen to what it says in verse 15. It says that from a child you have known the Holy Scripture. The reason that we know the Scripture, the reason we know for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The reason is, is because we've been taught the Holy Scripture from people all of our life. And it's something that's ingrained in our mind and it's ingrained all the way from these. My wife has been practicing all the songs for vacation Bible school. And I went in there last night, and it was, a, and it was a, a song that we had heard. What was the name of that song, Carrie? The Old Rugged Cross. And she was doing the sign from the Old Rugged Cross. And I sat in there, and I thought, man, a lot of people has done gotten away from the Old Rugged Cross. Whenever everything that we base our life and our salvation, our hope and our trust is in that Old Rugged Cross. And people tend to forget about that, that I will cherish the Old Rugged Cross. So... The Lord, the only thing that the Lord gave me whenever I was preparing for this message is he gave, me, he gave me this. He said, I want you to lay it down. And I was thinking, what, what are you talking about, Lord? And he said, I want you to lay it down. I want you to lay everything that you've got, I want you to lay it down. And I want you to make sure that, 
that what you do is you say, Lord, I'm going to lay everything I got down and I want to make sure that whatever I do is going to be pleasing to you. And I started looking for a song and lay it down. And the only song that I could find whenever I Google searched a, a song, lay it down, it was an old rat song. Any of y'all remember rat? <laughs> y'all do. And you're old and you're probably used to wear a mullet and you probably used to have bell bottoms because that's us. And, and I listened to that song is about rat, lay it down. Don't go back and listen. It ain't no good. And I thought, you know something? All that the Lord was telling me is he was saying, Steve, I want you to lay down everything that you have. And I want you to pay attention. And I started reading this scripture right here. And it says, from a child you've known the Holy Scripture that's able to keep thee wise. It's able to give you a foundation. And it says also, and it keeps you wise unto salvation through Christ, in, uh, through salvation in Jesus Christ. Jesus, he told them to lay it down. And I want y'all to turn to Luke chapter 9. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke chapter 9. And I'm going to start in verse 23. Listen to what he said. Jesus said to them all, he said, If any man will come after me, he said, I want him to deny himself. Jesus is saying, I want you to lay everything down. Men, that means we lay down our old pride. We lay down our selfishness. We lay down some of our ambitions. We lay down some of our desires. We lay down everything that would keep us from following the Lord Jesus in our life. And he goes on to say, he said, deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Did you know I, I, I loved when I, I watched The Passion of the Christ? But whenever I watched The Passion of the Christ the first time, I'll never forget this. Never forget it. I was taking a group of, of my class to Jackson, Mississippi, and we got there. And whenever we was there, it was just about a sold-out crowd to watch Passion of Christ. It just came out. And whenever I was there, there was a man that was, that was standing out there, and, and he told me what denomination he was from. And, and I told him, I said, man, it's good to, uh, it's good to hear uh, and talk to him. And he said, you know something? He said, I don't really believe that, that Jesus has come before. And I said, really? He said, no. He said, he said, I don't believe that Jesus has come before. He said, I believe that Jesus, whenever he came, he didn't die on the cross for us. He said, I believe he was a good man. He said, but I just don't believe all about that. And I told him, I said, I said well, if you don't mind, I said, before you go watch this, I said, if you don't mind, can I pray with you? He looked at me and said, well, yeah, you can pray with me. So I grabbed his old hand. And when I grabbed his hand, I, I squeezed it and I could feel him pulling away from me. And as he was pulling away from me, it's kind of like a, I'm the type of person that, that whenever somebody comes up and hugs me, you've only got a limited time to hug me, and then you're in my room. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And, and it doesn't matter if it's my children, if it's my wife, it doesn't matter who it is. But if somebody comes up and they grab a hold of me and they hold on to me, and they, I'm, I'm like, okay, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? And now you're in my place. This is my place. I need a little bit of room. Give me this, give me this, give me this. I don't know why I'm like that, but this man, I decided I'm holding you. And I grabbed a hold of his hand and I started praying with him. And as I was praying, I could feel him tugging at me. And I told God, I said, God, I want you to reveal your son to this man through this. God, I want you to reveal your son, Jesus Christ, through this, this message that you've got out on, on this video that we're about to watch. Well, this man, he sat just right up from me, right there to where I could see, I could see, the, and I know, I'm, I know I'm nosy, I get it. But I was watching it. Uh, and whenever I was watching, I was looking at him. I wanted to see how's he reacting. And, and, how, and boy, whenever it came up to the point that, that I was looking, and you know, all of a sudden I thought, man, it got to the point that Jesus had toted that cross. See, the Bible tells us that we've got to carry our cross daily. The one thing I noticed about Jesus carrying his cross is how heavy that cross was. And he was carrying that cross, and as he was going through Jerusalem, all of a sudden, he fell down, and that cross went to the ground. Joseph and Arimathea, he grabbed up that cross, and, and Jesus followed him all the way to Golgotha's hill. And I was in there, and I done got to the point that I, I didn't care what that man was thinking. It was touching me. And all of a sudden, I saw that, that portrayal of Jesus Christ, 
And he got down on his hands and knees. And he started crawling over there to that cross that was laying on the ground. And whenever he, that's whenever I got it. That's whenever I realized the passion of my Christ. That nobody had to drag him over, kicking and screaming to get him over there to that cross. That's whenever I realized that my Jesus had a choice. He told him I could get legions of angels to come and fight my battle. And I realized by me watching that show and I was paying attention so much for that man. And then it got to the point that I realized that was for me. I realized that Jesus at any moment, at any time, he can say, Father, it's finished. Father, I, I've, I've, I've carried my cross as long as I can, Father. I'm done. Those people in 2021, they're not going to accept me anyway. So, Father, why do I need to suffer like this? Why do I need to go through this? But Jesus didn't. He got down on his hands and knees and he crawled and he laid across that cross and allowed them. He allowed them to drive nails in his hand and in his feet. He allowed them to do that for you and for me. About that time, I was there just weeping and crying and it was blessing my heart to know what Jesus did that for me. And I looked up and I, I saw that man get up and started walking out. And as he started walking out, I wanted to, I wanted to go, hey, 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 don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. He, he's, he's rising. Don't leave, you're going to miss it. But I noticed something as he was leaving. Whenever he was leaving, he was doing this. Boy, he was wiping his old face. He's wiping them tears off his face. And I realized something. God used that same thing that touched me to touch him. Y'all, I don't know what God is going to have to use to touch you. I don't know what God is going to have to do to get your, get your attention. I really don't. You know, we can get up here and sing songs. We can do all kinds of things. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be pride that keeps you from doing God's word. It's going, to be, it's going to be helplessness that you think, you know, I'm helpless, God. I don't know what to do. Whenever I read all these scriptures, verse 24 says, Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. You know, back years ago, friend, you remember this. We, we was having a, a class, and it was called Faith. And what this class was, it was trying to, trying to train us to, to go out and reach people. And it's F-A-I-T-H, forsaken all, I trust him. See, the thing about it is, is we've got to have the faith that if we forsake everything we do in our life, everything that we think, if we forsake it all for the cause of Christ, that's what faith is. We say, Lord, I know you're going to handle us. You're going to take care of our situation. You're going to love us through everything. It, listen to what verse 25 says. It says, what is a man advantage or what will a man gain if he gains the whole world and lose himself or he is a castaway? That, that the person just misses everything. That word castaway right there means that the person is lost. A person loses their self. I don't know if you've ever lost yourself before, but the Bible uses it. It says, what will a man gain if we get everything? I had a person uh, say this, and he was a, one of the wealthiest men in the world. I think he was in the top five of the wealthiest men in the world. They asked him how much was enough money, and this is his answer. He said, just a little bit more than I got. What would it profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Whenever I look and I think about this, it's important. This world has so much to offer, but this isn't our end goal. This isn't, this isn't the end. This old thing right here that we've got, and I'm going to get to it in just a minute, but this is not the end. Listen to what verse 26 says. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my word. Here's Jesus talking. If you're ashamed of me and my word, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed whenever he comes in his glory and his fathers and of the holy angels. 
See, I think about this scripture because this scripture was about not being ashamed of Jesus. But I want to I tell you something. You need to make sure that you're saved because there's more. Listen to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 10. I want to read this scripture. Because Jesus, he always explained. Listen to what he said in Matthew 10, 32. It says, Whosoever there shall, for shall confess me before men. Did you know there's more to being a Christian than just going to church? There's more to being a Christian than just saying, I love the Lord. There's more to being a Christian of singing especially. There's more to being a Christian than what we show. The Bible tells us, listen to what he said. Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. Jesus is saying, there's more to you being a Christian than just going to church or just acting good or just being righteous in your own little way. He's saying, you must confess me before men. Men. And he goes on to say, But whosoever denies me before men, will I also deny before my Father in heaven. You know, Jesus described this old world. All through the Bible, Jesus described this old world. And I want y'all to think about this. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus described what we're going through right now. Does this make sense? Because I want y'all to know the Bible says it's alive, it's well, it's same yesterday, today, and forever. But listen to how Jesus describes this old world that we're living in. The Bible says in Mark 8, 38, it says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous, listen to how he, he's explaining, this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed whenever he comes in his glory with the Father and with the angels. See, i got to share something with you. There's going to be people this morning that's really not going to get real. Well, Steve, what are you talking about? There's people this morning that they're going to, they're going to be ashamed of the Lord. There's going to be people this morning that they're going to say, you know something, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get to the point. There's people in here this morning that did not sing because they was afraid that somebody beside them would have heard them sing and think that person didn't sound good. So I want y'all to know something. If you're one of those people, you need to start sitting by yourself and just giving it all you've got to sing to the glory of God. Because I want y'all to know, whenever we get to heaven, I don't know what our voices are going to be like, but I'll tell you this. All we're going to be doing when we get to heaven is rejoicing and praising God and singing and praising Him. The Bible says that we're going to dance. I can't dance a lick, but I want you to know your foot's going to be well, brother. We're going to be dancing like crazy whenever we get to heaven and praising God. We need to get busy about it right now, praising God and getting things right. So we got to listen. What if you, what if you are the first person that's supposed to stand this, this evening? What if you're the first person that's supposed to walk down to the altar for other people to come? What if you're supposed to be the one that sets the example or sets a standard? I told y'all Wednesday about a lady that told me, she said, Brother Steve, I know why people didn't go to the altar this morning. I said, how come? She said, because I was supposed to have been the first one. God told me to go. God told me to serve. God told me to love. I want to ask you, are you going to be the first person to make a step for Jesus Christ right now. See, I got to share something with you. Jesus has been to heaven, y'all agree? And Jesus has been to earth. And Jesus has made a choice of where he wants to spend his eternity, and it's not here. But what we're doing is we're holding everything that we've got to this old place. Do I have a nice enough car? Do I have a nice enough house? Do I have a nice enough job? Do I have a nice enough? You go ahead and write it down. Is my wife pretty enough? Is everything going good in my life or is it going bad? And I want you to know Jesus said I want you to make the right choice. He says make the right choice because I've got a place for you. I've got to read one last scripture. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Got to share something with you before I'm done. This morning, I was leaving the house. And right there on my, uh, on my dresser at the house, there's, a, there's some pictures. And then those pictures was pictures of whenever I was married on my wedding day. And then those pictures that I look, I, every time I look at those, and I look at them pretty much every day because it's, it's right there where I go and get my stuff out, and right there's a picture. I don't know if my wife 
puts it there for a reason or what. I, I, I wonder if my wife's is saying, Steve, you, you look, I still look good, and you don't. I don't know what it is. I, I, you know, uh, you need to do exercise. You need to quit eating all them chips. I don't know what it is, but, but whenever I look at that all the time, I, I look and, and, I, and I see something that's, that God said, this is perfect. And whenever I looked at it this morning, I, I looked at, at her, and I, I think about this. Because after you've been married 66 years, fixing to be 67 years, you look at that person and you still see that person that's still got a head full of hair. They still look there strong. And they're still beautiful in your eyes. And whenever you look at them, you're thinking, I, there's no way I could have lived my life like that without that person. And it's something that you still think about today. Miss Bobby, I know what I'm talking about because whenever Brother Bill was sick and he went into the hospital for just a few days, your life was changed. Do you know something? The one thing that you love the most here on this earth is going to be your praise partner in heaven. So why don't you make the person that you love the most here on earth be your praise person while you're here on earth? Why don't you sing praises to God together? Why don't you, why don't you get, get, get excited about God together and get to the point that you're saying, man, I want to praise you, Lord. I got this scripture that I want to read because this is right here. Jesus said, I want you to make the right choice. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Jesus said, come unto me. Come unto me, all your burden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come on unto me. See, Jesus wants you to know that he wants you to come unto him. Wait a minute, Brother Steve, I'm saved. Listen, I'm not, ta- I'm not, I'm not dis- dis- just disputing whether or not you're saved, but are you coming on to Jesus? Are you getting to the point in your life that you're saying... Lord Jesus, I want more of you. Lord Jesus, I want you to not only be my Savior, but I want you to be my Redeemer. I want you to be my friend. I want you to be my companion. I want you, Lord Jesus, to be everything I need. There's some of you that right now you're saying, boy, I'm going through trials right now. And you'll never give it to Jesus. But listen to what he said. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest of your soul. My yoke is easy and my burdens light. All through this, I think about this, and, and I want to share this with you. If I was going to tell you anything to do, I'd tell you this. Give it all, give it all, give it all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, broken toys. Give it all, give it all, give it all to Jesus. Listen. And he will turn your sorrow into joy. See, people this morning, they're going to make a decision of what they're going to do. You may be saying, Brother Steve, I'm saved. I'm not talking about whether or not you're saved. I'm asking you, are you satisfied with where you are? Are you excited about where you are spiritually? Are you to the point in your life that you're saying, God, I'm excited of where you've got me and what you've got me doing? Or are you miserable in your life right now? Because it it says, for he will turn your sorrows into joy. See, you got a choice to give it all to Jesus or hold on to it yourself. Let's pray. God, my prayer is that every person here that they're evaluating their heart, their life, they're evaluating their circumstances, God, I pray that they have their heart right with you. Lord, we're at an invitation time and there's going to be people who are saying, you know something, I don't want people to know what I'm going through. Whenever you know our hearts, Lord, I pray that you strengthen us, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.